Hi everyone, it's Lisa from A Simple Season. As I'm sitting here right now, some of the worst storms of the season are raging through a lot of the United States and Canada. And with storms comes the risk of power outages. And I think it's pretty safe to say that without electricity, a lot of us would feel pretty lost. But electricity isn't perfect. It can fail sometimes and it can be faulty. So we need to do the best we can do to prepare for those times. So let's get started. If the power were to go out for more than a few days and I was worried about the food in my freezer is I would set up some Rubbermaid tubs like this one and put all of my freezer food in there and put them out in the snow obviously in a safe place away from critters and that would be a way to protect my food for a little bit longer until the power were to come back up on again. Another great thing to have during power outages are tea lights and stock up on loads of them because these are so versatile. You can not only use these as a candle, as a a little source of light but you can also use these to cook with and I'll link a video up above where I did an experiment of cooking with these tea light candles and you can also use them to make a flower pot heater. I made a video on this a few months ago but just as a recap if you're new you can take a cookie sheet and flip it upside down so the bottom of the cookie sheet is on top and the reason we do this is to create an air pocket between the floor and the flat surface of the cookie sheet because this surface will get hot and you don't want to damage your floor or tabletop or wherever it is you decide to put this. So you light 10 or 12 tea lights and then take a new flower pot and you want to put it on top of uh, something. I've got some canning rings here because you just want a little bit of airflow here to get that going. And you will see that after this is running for 15 or 20 minutes, you will not be able to keep your hand on the top of this and it will get quite hot. So this is a great way in a pinch to take the chill out of a smaller room. And it also goes without saying, it's important to have an alternate light source in the form of either oil lamps or candles or a battery operated flashlight. You will need something to help light the way. And I love all of these options for different reasons. Oil lamps in particular, I just love. I've collected them for years and I usually find them at thrift, sh thrift shops for just a few dollars a piece or my local hardware store carries them and they're under $20, but not only do they give a beautiful ambient glow, but they also generate a little bit of heat as well. So if I put my hand on the top, it is very, very hot. So if you are just kind of sitting beside them and you want to be able to warm your hands, it's a lovely option and it's just a great way to have a backup light source for when the power goes out. Another great option for lighting is a battery operated headlamp because there's nothing worse than trying to work on something that you're trying to repair and holding a screwdriver and a flashlight at the same time. So a headlamp just alleviates all of that and it's great to have with all of your supplies. Also, it's really important to have alternate ways that you can cook your food. So if you can invest in a propane stove, like a Coleman stove or a little single burner camp stove, it's a really great idea because unlike gasoline, propane will store for years. It keeps really, really well. And you can not only use the propane stove to, of course, cook your food, you can use it to heat up water, to fill up hot water bottles, to keep yourself warm. We don't have a generator. We don't have one that's, you know, gonna fire up our whole house or run our oil furnace or anything like that. It is just not in our budget at the moment. And having a generator would be great but because we don't have that we have to figure out alternate ways to do things without using one so we're just focusing on simpler things to do if the power goes out so for heat for us that would be hot water bottles flower pot heaters 
our fireplace and I might be looking into getting either a little buddy heater or a big buddy heater so that we have something that will run on propane that we can use to heat a larger room. But in the meantime, that's what we're using in addition to blankets and scarves and everything else to keep us warm and cozy. The next thing is try to have some food on hand that you can just open up and eat. So even if you have no way of heating up your food, Try to have some things that you can just open up and it's ready for you. So these are a couple things I got from Costco. So this is like a, a four bean salad, which is absolutely delicious. There's some antipasto here, corned beef. I have some uh, grilled mackerel fillets, olives, beets, crackers. I mean, if I had to pull any of these together for a lunch, I mean, this is a meal that I would love to have if the power's out or not. I mean, some some crackers and some of the corned beef, some olives, antipasto, that is an absolutely fabulous meal right here. If your power is out for any extended period of time, it may affect your ability to flush your toilets, but you still need to take care of business. So a really simple solution is just using a five gallon bucket that you can pick up at any local hardware store. So what I've done here is taken a couple of trash bags and just double lined the inside of the bucket. And then I also picked up one of these plastic toilet seats and it fits perfectly around the inside of the bucket. It just snaps down and then you've got a nice comfortable seat to sit on. And these are pretty inexpensive. I think you can find these at pretty much any camping store. I think I paid under $15 for this one. And then what I have seen some ingenious people do if you can't find one of these is I have seen people take a pool noodle and just cut halfway through the inside um, length of it and then fit the pool noodle around the uh, sides of the bucket so that it's soft and squishy when you sit on it. So these can be great for extended power outages or for camping as well. The other thing I like to do is store extra water for washing and hygiene. So every time I finish a one gallon container of vinegar, I just fill it up with water right out of the tap and I store it here underneath my sink in my kitchen and I put them in my bathroom and everywhere else I normally use water. And you can save it for six months and then just change it out and store them again. So these are great to have just in case the water gets shut off. You have some options for washing and for hygiene. In addition to storing water underneath your kitchen sinks and your bathroom sinks, you can also get things like baby wipes to keep yourself clean and antibacterial wipes to help you clean other things so that you're not having to use so much of your stored water. And don't forget also that you need your water for drinking and cooking as well. So try to have at least one gallon of water per person per day for as many days as you feel necessary to have put away. Also paper plates because who wants to do a big sink full of dishes when the power's out? The thought of not having electricity isn't exactly comfortable, but the goal is to stay positive and have other options so that you don't feel stuck and hopeless when you're put in a situation without any power. So with that said, I'd like to hear from you. So let me know in the comments what you think because we are all here to help each other out. So take care everyone and we'll catch you in the next one.